Hello and welcome, it's Chris from Christopher Hall Training. Welcome to this tutorial. The topic is how to improve hip flexibility. I'm gonna take you through three slides. The first two we're gonna go through a little bit quicker and then the third one we're gonna spend a little bit more time on. The first one, as you can see, is the importance of hip flexibility. The second one is what hips do. And then the third one is the nuts and bolts of how to improve hip flexibility. So, what we're talking about is how to improve flexibility, but first, why bother doing it? Why is it important to have flexible hips? Well, as you can see here on my four bullet points, there are more, but I just thought I would share these four with you um, just to try and keep it as short as possible. Number one is they reduce pressure on the low back. So if you've got more flexible hips, the hips can do their job better. So the lower back above it doesn't have to compensate and do part of that job. If your hips can do what they do, your lower back can do what it does. Number two is absorb more shock. If you've got stiff muscles, they can absorb the shock when your foot hits the floor as you walk or as you run or as you walk upstairs or whatever it might be. But if you've got softer, more pliable, more flexible joints, they can absorb that shock so it doesn't get up into the lower back. What will also be of benefit is you won't then get as much of a muscle imbalance. So it's going to affect not only your lower back pain, it's also going to help your posture and it's also going to help your core strength and core stability. You become more stable, your joints become more stable, your hips become more stable, your spine becomes more stable. Because your hip muscles are doing their job correctly, the muscles of your back can do its primary role, which is stabilize the spine. If your hips are really focused on the movement of your body and the movement of your hips, then your back can do its job more effectively. If you've got um, more flexible hips, your muscles function that much better. So your balance will improve, which will then impact on your posture again. And number four, is the health of your joint improved? So just the general health of your joint. So the blood circulation, the nerve supply of the muscles activating and deactivating at the right time. So again, we're talking about not only the general health, but we focus back on posture, stability of the joint, and the the lower back pain effects that come from stiff hips. So the reasons why we want to improve our flexibility is because it compounds and affects so many other things. General health of the joint, core stability, core strength, posture, lower back pain, pain in other places of the body. So it's very important to have more flexible hips. So if you hadn't thought of having more flexible hips, if you want to improve core strength or if you want to overcome low back pain, then those are four reasons to start improving the flexibility of your hips and that will then impact on lower back pain, core strength, core stability, posture and just the general health of your joint. So hopefully that's made a little bit more sense. What we're now going to talk about is what the hips do. There are many things that your hip do, but we're going to focus on three fundamental movements. Number one is lifting, number two is locomotion, and number three is rotation. And then they're highlighted in these pictures here. So lifting, number one, uh, locomotion, number two, so that could be walking or running, and then you've got number three, which is rotation. There are primary things that your hips want to do. One is to flex, so that's this position, and the other one is to rotate, and that's this position. So with regards to lifting, what we want is we want to be able to hinge from our hip joint, and we want to be able to maintain that natural S-curve that goes through the spine. If we've got inflexible hips, if I just quickly draw one here, if we've got inflexible hips, and we've got a weight on the floor, if we can't bend our hips to get down into this position to pick it up, what we've got to do is we've got to round our back to compensate, and then we can grab onto it. If we've got the flexibility, we can maintain that position, and we can get down and pick up the object that we need to pick up. So it's very important when we're lifting, and then that impacts into carrying objects as well because if we start the movement well with a good lift it's going to help us when we're carrying things as well 
The second one is locomotion. So when we are walking and we, when we are running, we want to initiate the movement from the hips. We want to be able to lift the knee and then we want to be able to strike the floor and then push back with that leg with the hips, not necessarily the knee. If we don't do this as effectively, it puts more pressure on the knee below and the lower back above it. So this goes back to what I was talking about. If the hips can't do their job properly, the lower back will have to start compensating and doing some of that work. That will start to happen if we don't use our hips as we walk and as we run. So what we need to be able to do is make sure we've got good flexible hips, then we can start focusing on activating the muscles, feeling the muscles working, and then we can start using them as we locomote, as we run, and as we uh, walk. Number three is rotation. To be able to get into this position and to be able to do walking and running correctly, your hips need to be able to rotate. Now what this basically means is my foot is pointing in that direction, my hips are pointing in that direction, my hands are pointing in that direction, my body is pointing in that direction, and my head is pointing in that direction. So what that tells me, or tells you, is that my body is facing that way. The only difference being this foot is pointing in that direction. So I have rotated inwardly on that hip. Now what this internal rotation does, and external rotation for that matter, which is the opposite direction, is it allows me to get further down here. Now I won't go into the specifics of it, but when we lift, not only do we need to flex forward, but our hips also need to rotate inward and outward that will create more space for the body to start to come over. So it needs to be not only hip flexion, but also hip rotation. And it's the same with walking. Uh, sorry, walking and running. If our hips can not only flex, but rotate as well, they will that will allow the muscles to work more effectively, give us, giving us a much, more, uh, a, a much better walking posture and walking gait. So those are the three sort of basic things that your hips are doing every day. They want to be able to lift, locomote, and rotate. And what I want you to remember from the back, off the back of this is the primary role of the hips is to produce movement. So everything that our hips are doing is there to produce movement. What we want to be able to do is maintain proper posture of the spine and move at the hips. So that's how we need to think about our hips working. So how do we then go about improving that flexibility so we can get that hip flexion and that hip rotation? And that's what we're gonna talk about next. In this final slide, I'm gonna share with you a three-step formula for improving your hip flexibility. And it's these three bullet points here. So we start with massage or foam roll. So that could be a physical hands-on massage or it could be using a foam roller. Then we stretch it then we move. What this gets us doing, number one, the massage makes the muscles more pliable and easier to move. What we then do is take it into the next step is we lengthen those muscles that are now ready. Because if you can imagine uh, taking out a stick of chewing gum, and to start with it feels quite stiff, and if you pull on it, it either doesn't move, or if you pull too much, it will eventually snap. When you foam roll and massage it, it's like taking that stick of chewing gum and putting it in your mouth, chewing it for a while, and then you take it out, and then it's much more pliable and it can move a lot better. So what we then do with that much more pliable muscle is we stretch it, and then it's ready. Now that we've created some extra space, it's ready to be moved. So we would then go about moving it. So what are we focusing on when we're talking about hip flexibility? Well, we're talking about these three foam rolling exercises which is doing outside and sort of out to the side of the pelvis then you've got this one which is going up the middle of the leg so you're going sort of up and down here you can also go in and out as well inside to outside you're going up and down the middle of the thigh here and then the only difference with these two is my foot here is turned out. And this is causing me to go up the 
inside of my leg. So I would do exactly the same in that I would go up and down. It's just the difference of my foot position. I'm now going up the inside of my leg. So I've got inside, front, back and side, or back and outside, I, I should say. And what that's doing, that's going around the whole hip and the different muscles of the hip. Even here, you could sort of come up onto the front part into here. So not only are you doing the front of the thigh, you're also coming up into this position here. So all the muscles are getting covered that are associated with the hip. They're being moved and molded and made more pliable, which then brings us on to the stretches. And we've got stretch number one, stretch number two, stretch number three, and stretch number four. Now these stretches are covering these different areas of the body. So with this stretch, it's up the front of the top or the top of the thigh and up through into the abdomen. Stretch number two is very similar. The only difference being is you can see my foot is elevated. Now this is doing the muscle that goes down the front of the thigh. So the same as number two up here. Now the higher I lift my heel, the more that muscle is going to stretch. So we've got top of the thigh into the front of the abdomen. We've then got the muscle that goes through the thigh. Number three is where we come round onto the outside of the hip and the, uh, sorry, the back of the hip and the outside of the hip here. So this is more associated with number one here. So I would use a, a step, as you can see, I'm using a, a gym bench here, but I would use a step, a chair, a sofa, a step, whatever it might be, but I'm just lifting my leg into that position and putting the leg across the bench. I'm then supporting myself with my arms and I'm letting this leg drop down with a nice, comfortable bent knee. So I'm going into that position, stretching the outside and back of the hip. And then finally, I've got this stretch here which is the inside of the leg, similar to foam rolling number three. So what I'm trying to achieve here is I've got my knee on the floor and I'm trying to take my foot as far away from it as possible. So I want to get this foot over here, which is going to challenge and stretch right up the inside of my leg. So I've foam rolled all the way around with these three. I've then lengthened all those muscles with these four. Now I'm ready to start moving it. So what I would do is I would come into this position, just very simple. There are a lot of exercises you can do. You could do the rotation one that I showed you earlier, but this is just a nice basic movement that will help you understand and help your hips learn a greater range of movement. So what I would focus on is I've got my feet shoulder width apart. I would also have my knees towards the outside of my feet as I look down. And then I want to hinge at my hip. So my hip goes backwards and my body starts to tip forwards. What I'm trying to maintain is a natural S curve through my back. So I'm lifting my chest and I'm keeping my head in line. So I've got a nice straight line going through here. And all I'm trying to do is get down as far as I can. So I would do this before I started to give me a sort of a pre-exercise, pre-stretch range of movement. Then I would go through all of these foam rolling and all of this stretching and then I would perform this and test it again to see if, let's just say, I started in this position and this, is, this was as far as I could come down. But once I did all of these, I could then come down that little bit further. So I could add a few extra degrees. So that's helping the length of my hamstrings, the length of my hip flexors, the length of my uh, glutes around the back and around the side. And then you've got all the muscles around the front and the side as well that are being affected. So this is a very sort of simple formula, simple system to get you started. It may not hold every answer for your whole journey, but it will certainly give you the starting blocks to get you going to improving your hip flexibility, which will then impact on core strength, core stability, better posture, better joint health in general, reduction of uh, potential injuries in the future, so on and so forth. So hopefully this has been helpful. Hopefully it's given you a little bit more of a practical understanding of what you need to do to be able to improve hip flexibility to gain all those benefits. So many thanks for watching. My name is Chris from Christopher Hold Training. I'll speak to you in the next tutorial.